just the fact that we got 14 evolutions live fire in an acquired structure i'm talking like real heat dude real smoke it was phenomenal dude All right, hey, what's up, Rejects? Relentless Rejects podcast with Adam Haywood 2.0. We just wrapped up the LCC Fire Conference, heading back to Colorado, beautiful Rocky Mountains. Get out of this flat terrain of Kansas, no offense. But, uh, you know, we love our outdoors and question the politics in Colorado. So, you know, we're heading back, but heading back home. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start it off by just giving a huge, huge shout out to the staff at LCC Fire School, specifically Andrew Johnston was heading it up, class act, great, great human being. The efforts that he's putting out there to get some quality instructors and people to be just interested in coming out to Parsons, Kansas is a mountain of effort in him. But, you know, he uh, he didn't do it alone. Adam, who, who was the rest of the people that he was he had helping him out? Uh, Ross Harper is one of them. Rick Mosier is another one. I think he gets a lot of help from the Fools of Oz. Yeah, absolutely. So what he made a point to do was that he, you know, LCC is the Labette Community College in Parsons, Kansas. So they, they operate off a college budget. There's not a huge mountain of cash, a pile of cash that they can actually use to bring in some heavy hitters, but they were still able to bring in guys like Corley Moore, uh, Chief Trey Nelms out of Nashville, the Oz guys who volunteer their time for free to come out, which is which is awesome. And then, you know, uh, me personally, I, I, would, I loved interacting with the MV Fire Rescue team out of San Antonio, Texas. Those guys were a blast. I, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll touch base on that in a little bit, but the fact that LCC Fire School is doing big things. I found out personally that they've been doing this for 41 years, which is unheard of because, you know, the era, and I think in the, the era of many conferences is fairly new, is a fairly new concept. You know, everybody knows about FDIC, but, you know, the mini, the era of the mini conference where you can find something in your backyard is, is fairly unheard of, but LCC, Labette Community College, has been doing it for over 40 years. And that was really cool. I mean, they also have a very tight niche family vibe. Also, we got there. Adam Haywood was teaching at the event and I got to be his plus one at the instructor dinner. And Adam, why don't you talk about what that energy was like as soon as we got there? Well, like you said earlier in the last podcast, this is my second year out there and every year they outdo themselves with their hospitality and their grace with the instructors. It's a very, very welcoming environment. They bring you in. I mean, the instructor dinner is a great networking opportunity where we sit down to a home cooked meal, right? Uh, Ross's brother cooks everybody a home cooked meal. I mean, we had chicken thighs, we had chicken breasts, we had pulled pork, homemade coleslaw. I mean, the works, they had a cooler of beer. They had a table with like bourbon and whiskey and, you know, all sorts of like mixers and stuff. Um, and man, how cool is that that they just roll out that, you know, red carpet that to me that means more to somebody traveling out to you know deliver their class or even be an instruct a, a student than just ordering 100 pizzas on the dominoes.com app you know what i mean like that that's some real effort and a lot of pride in like their hometown and getting you know everybody every facet of their community involved in the in the execution of the conference so it's very very hospitable very very uh welcoming just it, man it just it starts you out on the right note with a full belly a glass of a glass of bourbon and a, a bunch of you know fellowship and brotherhood yeah extremely laid back feel too uh, just to come in and just see people in the community out there so happy to just fill your plate as soon as you hop in the food line they just they're just so happy that you're even there they even say and thank you so much for even coming to our little town and i thought that was extremely special because you and i touched on the fact that it could have easily done catered food they could have just done boxes of jimmy john's or firehouse subs or something which is something that we see often but they went out of their way to probably spend hours and more than one person just preparing food for this event and i know other than you and i that there was definitely instructors that were very appreciative of it and i noticed too also 
you know, guys like Corley Moore and, and Trey Nelms, when they're walking into the room, it's casual. It's super casual, and you don't really get that opportunity to meet instructors in that setting at even many conferences, right? You know, there's there's big stage and lights and, you know, and it's just, it's a little bit different. So LCC Fire School, please, even though when you start blowing up and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, which we know you will, please keep that vibe as much as you can. Adam and I definitely appreciate that. And that was one of the biggest things we loved about it. So Adam, this was not your first year, correct? Uh, no, this is my second year out there. So talk a little bit about what you think was different from your first year to your second year, and what did you do first year, and what did you do second year? So uh, the first year I was out here, I delivered a class on rotary saws, a classroom session on rotary saws, and then the, on the hot day, we did a hybrid forceful entry class where we mixed irons and saws together, uh, had a lot of fun, uh, towed the trailer out there with my buddy Dwight, you know, had a whole bunch of props, and Everybody went, got to go yard and cutting doors and, you know, busting, busting doors and bolts and stuff like that. But the big thing I noticed from uh, 2023 to 2024 is honestly that the, the scope and the reach of the conference is getting bigger and bigger, right? So last year, um, I was the only one to my knowledge, as I talked to Andrew, I've been very close with Andrew for the last uh, two years or so, to come from Colorado. This year... Not only was it you and I that came out from Colorado, but we saw two other brothers that we just randomly ran into at Texas Roadhouse on the way back in Wichita, right? Two guys that work for some uh, heavy hitting apartments that, you know, are into the job and they caught wind of it. We, we don't, we've never met them before in our lives, but that just showed me like, okay, this conference, the footprint's getting larger, right? The, the reach is getting bigger and that's all for the better, man. If we can get more, we can get more and more people out there and, and discover this little hidden gem. All, all the better for the school, for the town of Parsons, and for all the firefighters in that in the southeast uh, portion of Kansas. Yeah, I, like I said, it's, it's going to get bigger. That was, it was my first year, and I love the experience. And let's be honest, I talked about it in the first half of the podcast, was that I, I love me some Corley Moore. He's a mentor of mine, and I'm glad to say that he's a good friend. I was able to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with him because, you know, I think we were in a part of the country where it was, it was either two things, either, I don't know, maybe they lived under a rock and they didn't know who he was, or they thought he was, you know, big time. Like he, like it was the, like it was the rock walking through the front doors and people were intimidated to go see him. Well, I, I benefit, benefited from that fact was that him and I actually knew each other. I've been on the scrap. I, I'm a vigilante. So. He knew my face. I was able to sit down with him several times and have conversations. I got to listen to his keynote, which we'll touch a little bit on, and then sit all the way through the nine L's. I have not personally got to listen through his nine L's presentation, which is a four hour presentation. I don't know how he does it. He did a keynote and a four hour presentation in the same day, which is, man, I don't know. I, I need a nap in between that, but he's, he's a machine. But uh, Adam, you have not seen his keynote or any of his presentations, correct? What was your first impression? No, I haven't. I've followed Corley for some time now and tuned into the live scraps and whatnot, but I've never seen him speak live or, or at any event. And the guy's a ball of energy, to say the least. Like he was instantly had the audience captivated, made me kind of reevaluate like my approach to, you know, um, interacting with the audience as an instructor, um, as, you know, some sort of like, you know, fire service figurehead, absolutely uh, magnetic personality. Very, very cool to see. Yeah, he had, I've actually seen that uh, very similar keynote because he did that in Pensacola before, but it was good to see it again because also I, I'm taking notes as well on his style of presentation. I've never seen anybody in the fire service deliver presentations the way he does. He has 800 to over a thousand slides and clicks. And the, the unique thing about Corley is that he never even has to look at the screen. Yeah. He can probably click the clicker 10 times and it's still on one slide and things are flying in from all over the place and he's making his own sound effects which is it was just right in line with this with the specific click that he makes i don't know how he does it but you can tell he's rehearsed it so much and i almost feel sad for his wife amanda because i'm sure she's had to sit there and watch him while he perfects it before he delivers it because it seems like he has a lot of attention to detail puts a lot of work into it which is something to say about the type of instructor he is right because you're developing as an instructor which is another thing that I wanted to touch into. 
what I noticed at this conference was that there's a lot of people working on their game, their presentations in the classroom, and then also building up their own hands-on platform during the hot classrooms. So what is your advice? How, first off, how did you even get into LCC Fire School to be an instructor? And what does that process look like for anybody that wants to put in for it next year? And what would you say to someone that's on the fence that's just waiting for that nudge to, to dive into teaching? So a lot of parts of that question. <laughs> um, originally, it was posted on, uh, I think, FireCon Collective or one of those uh, Facebook groups. Uh, Andrew reached out and said, hey, LCC Fire School 2023, we're open call for presenters. Um, I'm still pretty new in the game. You know, I incorporated my, my uh, business in 21. I've been teaching for a little bit, but um, you got to cut your teeth somewhere, right? So I put in for it. They accepted me. Um, you know, last year was a great learning experience. This year was another great learning experience. But um, keep your eye open for what they call like open calls for presenters for various conferences. Some of them, like LCC, are small enough where they need to actually call for people. Some of them are, are closed doors, like high planes, where they just kind of you know reach out to their own people or uh, you know mile high things like that. And, but not everyone uh, does that. LCC Fire School for one, uh, Key City, Revolutionary Fire Tactics at the Lake, all sorts of the uh, conferences do have these opportunities for you to put in a class submission. And usually it's a it's a Google form or a Google Doc. You say who you are, who you work for, you know, what are you submitting? Are you submitting a classroom lecture that's two hours long? Are you submitting a four hour thing, an eight hour, you know, hot day? What do you need? Who are you traveling with? It's very, very simple to put it together, but you know, they want to know how your class, whatever you've developed, is going to impact their core audience, right? So I, I honestly, I learned a lot from last year, coming out with rotary saws and talking about some, I don't say big city fire tactics, but urban, urban firefighting tactics about cutting roll up doors, sheet curtain doors, things like that. Probably not super applicable to the volunteer firefighters in Southeast Kansas in a very, very rural setting, right? So there wasn't a lot of buy-in or honestly interest in, in the first year I was out there. I have people in both my classes, but it could have been more like this year when I put my class together, I really tried to tailor the through the lock classroom. Like, hey, this is applicable from everybody from big city to farmland. You don't need a, you can have a million dollar budget or you can have a $10 budget and you can make a difference. Like if you take this class and um, actually use it on call. And it was much more well received this go around, much more better attended. And I'm just saying, put that into your, like the matrix when you're putting these things together, like make sure what you're putting out there is relevant. You know, you're probably not gonna go teach a cave rescue class in the middle of, you know, downtown Denver, right? Yeah, well, I actually, well, so after being in that t small town USA, I feel like that's the kind of place where nobody locks their doors, <laughs> right? So you're over here teaching through the lock and it's like, try before you pry. No one locks their doors. This is small town USA. Everybody knows everybody. So I'm glad that it was more well received this time around, but that is something that you need to think about. I, I've never considered that when you have a specific niche that you want to teach on, especially, you know, saws, there's probably not a lot of roll up doors in Parsons, Kansas, right? Things like that. And we, there was a lot, there was a lot of firefighters from all around that County and that region that came out, but I'm sure it's very similar to what you were saying. So I want to address one last thing that you talked about. If you're on the fence or you're thinking about putting in for a class, just, just take the plunge, man. Like there's no better place to, like I said earlier, cut your teeth and really develop who you are as an instructor than these smaller conferences before you, if you want to go this way, try to get into like the circuit, if you will, or try to like teach on like larger conferences. Um, some of the conferences, if you try to get into them, we'll ask like, where else have you delivered this class, right? Because they want to know that you have a proven track record of like speaking in front of groups, right? You have your presentation is dialed, it's polished, right? And you've actually delivered it um, to audiences. So LCC Fire School is an excellent place to do that to at least put in for it. What's the worst they're going to say? No, right? Cost you nothing to submit. And if they if they call your number, then all the better. Come on down, dude. Uh, everybody's full of grace. Everybody's there to learn. Nobody's going to, you know, chastise you or, or heckle you because, you know, you might stumble over a slide or two if it's your first time ever doing it. It's a very, very open learning environment, very, very conducive to instructors trying to get, you know, uh, their feet underneath them. 
Yeah, and just to just to give an example of what to expect, the it's it's literally in a community college. So there's classroom settings where there's only probably 20 chairs and desks in a room. So you're presenting, you're not, there is one giant auditorium, but of course, Corley Moore had that. Everyone else had the classrooms. But, you know, I had the opportunity to listen to Jeremy Sanders speak on something that he has been working on and developing over time. And man, I don't know what happened that morning, but he got thrown a huge cur curveball. He got his presentation up on the projector and it was cut at the bottom. You couldn't even see like the bottom eighth of the slide. So he kept having to explain what we're supposed to see, right? The clicker batteries died in the middle of it. And he literally had to text his son who was manning his merch table out in the hallway to come in and work the, the laptop to, to advance the slide during his presentation. But you know what? All of us that were in there, we fully embraced the fact that he worked his way through it. No one got up and walked out of the room. No one was huffing and puffing and rolled their eyes. They really were there to listen to what the man had to say. The topics that he talked about were important. And, you know, you just got to see him in person to know how this guy delivers his message. He's a very stoic, emotionally intelligent individual. And I, I got the chance to finally see him teach and it was a great setting because I'm glad I'm sure he was glad that there wasn't a whole auditorium there and and it was definitely a place where even if you're a seasoned instructor you can bring your new material sure. to work on your stuff just kind of like a comedian right comedians big like a Kevin Hart probably working on new material just walking into a comedy club in the middle of nowhere being like let me try these jokes out on you and if they don't land then they don't land but you're working on your stuff Dude, that's an excellent point excellent point yeah, so I'll touch a little bit on um, Corley's nine L's because that was the only lecture that I got to listen to other than Jeremy Sanders. I got a little bit of Jeremy Sanders, but then Corley pretty much took up the rest of the time block for me. The nine L's is obviously based on his book, The Nine L's, and I've listened to the audible version of it as well. So a lot of the components that he was addressing, I had already was able to reference in the book. And it was interesting because he asked me at the beginning, he's like, have you, have you heard the nine L's presentation before? I was like, Oh no, I haven't. And he, you know, so the funny thing is he actually called me afterwards to give him some, some honest insight and critique. And I was, I'm so glad he did. Cause I was prepared for it because he always talks about it. He, you know, he is, he's grateful for the, Hey chief, that was a great presentation. That was the best lecture I've ever heard on culture and leadership. He loves those, but he also asks for honest criticism. And I took some notes and gave it to him. But overall, the presentation, if you have not seen it or heard it or read the book, you're going to benefit tenfold. He says that it's more built around the company officer on learning to develop the culture within your own organization, within the four walls of your firehouse. But it's pertinent to every single firefighter. Everyone can find value in it. He is so masterful at the presentation that I think he can do it in his sleep. You can definitely tell he's done it hundreds of times, but he's always evolving it. From When I talk to him, he's always looking to improve, and he does make changes here and there, and you can tell that uh, he's very passionate about it. I can't wait to catch his Culture Forge at the Firemanship Conference. But, yeah, Corley Moore's the man. If you haven't caught his 9Ls, Find out where he's teaching and presenting it and sign up for it. You won't, you won't miss out. So Adam, let's talk about your experience. I know you taught and then something else happened, right? You, so you taught and then you had to, you didn't get to listen to any more lectures, right? No. So I did teach. I taught, um, right after Corley's keynote, I went straight into delivered my through the lock lecture. And then I was fortunate enough. Uh, I think I mentioned about this in the first, first half of the podcast, but last year I saw the working engine a class put on by the Fools of Oz. Um, it's a day and a half long skills class with acquired structure in live fire. And I was like, I've got to get back to LCC Fire School in 2024 and take this class. So I did. Uh, Andrew was able to hook me up with that and get me a spot in the class. But yeah, after I delivered my lecture, man, went, we smashed a quick lunch and it was right down the street to an abandoned house that the town had willed to the school. I mean, how cool is that right off the get-go, right? They had multiple acquired structures for each of the classes. I'm sure you'll touch on that here in a second. But, uh, the, man, the biggest thank you to all the fools of Oz that I met out there, the Wichita brothers, the Olathe brothers, um, just some heavy-hitting 
into the job firemen that prepped the house, drywalled the house, resheated the house, fixed the house's roof, got it ready to, to burn in. We got 14 burns out of that house, dude. The fire, fire actually eventually made the attic in three of the rooms and they had to call an audible. But just the fact that we got 14 evolutions, live fire in an acquired structure, I'm talking like real heat, dude, real smoke, uh, excellent burn packages. It was phenomenal, dude. So what was cool was that that half day after my class, um, from lunch and lunch to the close at 5 p.m., all we did was skills, right? So we flowed two and a half, we flowed inch three quarters. We reviewed like uh, hose construction, which man, I hadn't touched on since Fire Academy 14 years ago, which I learned more about fire hose this week than I have in my entire career. I, I know that sounds crazy, but holy cow, I can, I can go back and nerd out with the hydraulic nerds at, at, at my department. Um, and then we talked about, you know, moving and making pushes through the building. And then the next day, uh, we got there bright and early. You dropped me off um, at seven in the morning. We got going and we just lit off. And those those guys worked hard to make sure everybody got through, everybody got reps, and we burned the absolute shit out of that house. It was, it was freaking awesome, dude. What were the Wichita guys like? I mean, I'd go work there in a heartbeat if, uh, if I could. You know what I mean? Their culture... It speaks for themselves. They have a certain swagger and cachet about them. And, you know, what you see is what they put on the Internet. They're only going to put the good stuff for the most part. But when you go out and you actually meet the brothers uh, in the field, right, and get their unfiltered, honest, candid opinions on their department, everybody instantly at the drop has, oh, we got, we got a great culture, right? We got a great culture. That that speaks volumes for, um, for their department and really – drives home what you see like you know online guys that want to go to jobs guys that go to fires and when they go to fires they get to do fireman stuff right so super cool and then man the the sleeper of the conference for me was the guys out of olathe they had tons of instructors there from the fools of oz and then i was fortunate enough to kind of get in you know when you're at like a, a hot train you kind of get in with like a group of guys for like the duration i got in with a dude from java missouri aj and a couple brothers from olathe and those guys again more pipe hitting uh brothers that are into the job um it was just it was cool man kansas really blew me out of the water with this firefighting culture yeah that's awesome i i saw the wichita guys walking around on day one and they're extremely tightly knit they uh definitely have a presence about them you know you, you they kind of look like the the big boys on the block walking around um it was super cool you know and i i miss I missed my man Keenan out there from Wichita. He's a Georgia smoke diver. He was even wearing the hat, and I was looking at him. I was like, I don't <laughs> remember where I know this guy from, but him and I have been talking on social media. I knew he was going to be there. He knew I was going to be there, but for some reason we couldn't make it happen. So, But lastly, I got one more question for you. So you guys have a Class A building in your, in your department, right? You guys get to do burn palace and things like that. How did that compare to the house fire that you were doing with the Wichita guys? So yeah, we are very blessed that we have a class A building. Uh, that being said, it is starting to show its age. The pageantite crumbles, right? The windows don't seal as good. That house was, I mean, having been in multiple house fires myself, that house was the closest approximation of being in a house fire in a controlled environment than literally being like in a, in a working fire. Um, nothing seals up quite like an acquired structure, right? I mean, it's already, the windows are already intact. The roof's in, intact. The doors are there, right? They even put a little bit of fire blocking foam, like where they needed to, to make it really tight. But holy cow, man! Like, you go in, okay? You go into our Class A burn building, like, you can even with the window closed, you can like literally see like fire like through the cracks because the window's just out of square and it's been exposed to elements for so long. Um, it's not hot, right? Like, I, I know it is. I know why we have it. You know, it serves a purpose. Please don't get me twisted on that. I'm very thankful we have it. Um, but its purpose is really to kind of check the JPR box, right? The house we were in was hot, hot, hot. It kept the, the heat and smoke and it was vent limited, dude. When you open the door, you could actually see uh, that bi-directional flow um, at the front door, which you would, you know, we, we don't ever get at our class A. When you'd open the, you'd call for vent and they would open the windows. You had that um, inflow and outflow, right? And then it kind of switched over to free burning. It was, way cool dude way way cool definitely worth it yeah i know for me that like i would love to get into some some live fire training maybe i'll sign up for that next time around 
but me specifically, I got to do the mission search class with the MV Fire Rescue guys. Matt Valdez is everything that he's he appears to be on podcasts and social media. Um, he's not just an Instagram firefighter making sweet content. What he's doing down in uh, the Texas area and the team he has built is absolutely amazing. You know, on top with Matt Valdez, he had other instructors, uh, Matt Bryan, Josh Watt. Those guys were hilarious. Yeah. They, they, they absolutely know their stuff. And we got to spend the first night with them, you know, at the social hour, basically, was, you know, they came in. We made a point to make contact with them because I, I've been speaking with Matt Valdez for over a year now, been trying to connect with him. And they just sat down with us and just were regular dudes, you know. And that's the thing that people are a little bit intimidated by the instructors. They feel that since they're the student, they're, you know, they're not supposed to co-mingle with the instructors for whatever reason. This wasn't the case at all. The MV Fire Rescue crew was super social, open. We, you know, got to exchange phone numbers and that's not the last time I know I'm gonna see them. I'm gonna take a trip down to to Texas. I definitely got Dagum on my my list for conferences. So I'm gonna get down there. And the crazy thing is Matt Valdez says, you know what, anytime you wanna come down, you can sleep on the couch, sleep on the floor, whatever you want and just come hang out. Like, just show that you're into it, man. That's all they care about. That's all any of these instructors care about, right? Is they they want to put together something just so they can connect and network with people that are into the job. That's the biggest thing about these conferences, in my opinion. That's the cool thing about the little ones, man, is that, look, I'll be totally frank with you. They gave me $120 to come down there and they said, here's, here's your room, right? Like nobody's coming down to these conferences to get rich, right? I can't really speak to the larger conferences like the FDICs, firehouse expos things like that but the little ones man everybody's there just to for the brotherhood the fe like the fellowship of training and just to pass on like their knowledge to other guys it's not like a big spectacle or show or like you know you're like a celebrity status or anything like that they're just regular human beings man they're super accessible they're super open it's just really really neat yeah, yeah and and to speak on my training day on day two with the MB Fire Rescue Team, they also acquired a house in Parsons, Kansas. And it was this old, dingy, beat up house, but on the outside, it looks like a two story residential balloon frame, which is already a problem, right? Like we all hear about balloon frames, never actually get to see them in real life where we're at in Colorado, but it was cool to actually see that. But this specific house was converted into three different apartments. So there's kitchens and bathrooms where you don't expect to see that. So that was a very unique obstacle for us going into the search. The, I don't know, I hope that the LCC school actually threw in furniture and it wasn't furniture that was left there from the previous tenants because we were, we were getting drug across the floor. We were tripod and laying out, belly down, swimming on the floor, like looking for victims constantly. We were in and out all day long eight hours a day we had real victims there was no dummies other than a other than a, a baby doll you know right because we didn't want to throw kids actual kids in there which i would have been down for but you know uh the victims definitely get banged up some getting drug around that through different you know carpet and tile and things like that but it was cool and they did the crawl walk run you know we were outside going over basic maneuvers for search but i tell you like we were in and out of that structure all day long in just bunker pants and helmet and gloves but when it was game time and we went into run mode and we were fully packed out on air and we're going into search the first time i went in as the firefighter performing search and i and i search an area and i get to the wall and i'm like we're clear here and i start turning back and the you know the instructor had to hint to me he's like are you sure this is clear and i'm like okay well obviously i missed something and i I go back and there's a door on that same wall. I touched the wall and said it was clear. I knew exactly where I was because I had been in it several times that day. And I forgot that there was a door with a small bathroom that had just been added on to the kitchen where there was an actual victim in there. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could have missed this because you don't imagine that there's a small bathroom attached to the backside of a kitchen. You know, it was, uh, it was pretty trippy what your brain will do to you when I don't know. I would call. I don't know what to call it. Complacency or stress inoculation or a little bit of both. 
but it was it was tri- it was a trip and then i got to be a victim at one point where they completely f- smoked out the room you couldn't see anything and they tucked me in this corner where there was a closet at the top of the stairs on like straight 90 degrees to the left and no one thinks that there's a closet to the left at the top of the stairs right because then there's a wall there's just like a, a wall to the left i sat there for 15 minutes while seven to 15 firefighters were in there looking for me and they could not find me and this was at the end this was in the run phase we had been in and out of this building all day long so it just goes to show that it doesn't matter how much you train on the basics you got to incorporate that stress inoculation you got to get in your gear and rep this stuff out because yeah we can walk through stuff all day and just nod our head and be like yeah i got it bro i got this don't worry about it when it's time to when it's go time when it's game time i'll be ready well (laughs) <laughs> we spent eight hours in the same house and still miss victims. So um, that was just my experience. Awesome experience. The MV Fire Rescue Team has so many other classes. I can't wait to attend those in the future. Hands down, great opportunity. And I got to do it at LCC Fire School in Parsons, Kansas. Pretty crazy. Adam, do you have anything to add on your experience? I don't. I would encourage you, if you're on the fence about going, it's it's cheap it's readily accessible i mean it's within a 12-hour drive of probably most of america right it's right in the middle of the country um it's worth it take the plunge man and if you've never been to a conference what better time to start than you know on on a smaller one right or you you can feel comfortable rather than getting lost in a sea of people and becoming a number you know in, in one of the much much larger ones but um by all means i can't thank Andrew and Rick and Ross and uh, the Fools and all those guys who helped put it together enough. They were great for their hospitality and just for, I mean, the logistic work, dude, of burning down a, an acquired structure. I, I'm a 1403 burn boss back in Colorado is monumental, right? And there's a lot of moving parts and those guys, they got it done. And I, I, I absolutely, hats off to them can't wait to be back i'm going to try to bring a bunch of brothers out next year maybe do the trey nelms class chief nelms class or uh do the working engine again i mean i'd I'd love to work with the wichita boys again so looking forward to it yeah and i know talking to andrew he's looking to always bring in new talent new instructors If, if, if you got something that the people want the people want to hear it then he'll bring you in and give you a shot and so who knows what they're going to have next year but I know you and I talked about bringing in people from our own organizations and trying to trying to get some people out there to come with us. So maybe we'll roll with a nice little group. I do want to add one thing. Uh, the brothers we met at the Texas Roadhouse last night, they were talking to somebody. I, I can't confirm this, but they, they have a vehicle extrication class out there. And they said the instructor to student to car ratio was one to one. So everybody literally had... They went to a junkyard, had free reign. Um, David Woodward and his group from One Warrior were out there training. They, I think their class is called Metal Metal Mayhem. But um, they just shredded cars all day. And this isn't like, hey, you cut these two hinges. And like that's like you're, you're, you're done for the day, right? Everybody had, I mean, you're talking one-to-one ratio of students to cars. That's, that's freaking awesome, you know? So just a quick shout-out to David, uh, Metal Mayhem and you know them executing their their class was such a phenomenal phenomenal use of resources yeah i definitely got to do the revolutionary fire tactics out in the ozarks i got some buddies out there in kansas city so maybe i could do drop off there and then shoot down ozarks is always a good time blue collar redneck riviera out there right like just just lots of money and boats yeah what's really cool when I, i've only been out there twice but i did learn that there's no speed limit on the lake and there's no horsepower limit either. So you just hear like drag boats just ripping down the lake at all hours of the day. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that, so that said, I also want to touch on that because we talked about the fact that to bring it back to firefighting, that's exactly what we want as firefighters, right? Give us the tools, give us the opportunity, and don't put a fucking speed limit on us. Let us go out there and do our job. Regulate the policy a little bit, but just kind of let firefighters be firefighters, right? This is a blue collar profession blue collars on the lake so let's just keep it all blue collar and just we want to go fast and we want to go hard that's right man yeah y'all that closes it off for us uh lcc fire school thank you again we will definitely be there next year i'm thinking about throwing my hat in thanks to adam motivating me to put a presentation together and speak 
as everybody knows that I'm a big culture and leadership guy and I'm a mentor of Corley Moore. So hopefully I could provide something that people want to hear. And hopefully Andrew over at LCC gives me a shot. We'll see. I don't know. If you end up there 2025, look us up. All right. Until then, that'll close off Relentless Rejects, Episode 3, Part 2. Catch you next time.